Hey everybody, welcome to the Dano channel. I am Dano, and I'm back with more shoe videos. In fact, if you notice, this is an old pair. This is the first pair that got me started. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about how I got started doing all this, and I'm seeing all the new subscribers here on the YouTube channel, and I wanted to find some way to thank you all for hitting that big red button and coming back and sharing my videos. So I decided why not go back to this old pair and share with you guys my tips, my secrets, the method I use to paint this design. So I've actually got a brand new one here. So there's the old one. Here's the brand new one. And I'm going to show you guys exactly how I painted this castle. So today's video is just going to be on the castle. Uh, now I have to tell you, the actual paint time took me about two hours to paint this. So rather than make you wait for a two hour video and sit through that whole thing talking with me, I've shortened it to about 15-20 minutes and I'm going to be going over it as a speed painting video, but there's also going to be some uh, pictures up in the corner there that you'll be able to see as reference. And also if you go to dano.net, it's D-A-N-O.net, I'll have uh, still picture references up there that you can see that'll kind of help you out as well. Now, first I'm going to go over a couple things with you of what we're going to need for this tutorial. And the first thing is going to be shoes. Of course, you're going to need shoes. Uh, they can be Toms, they can be Vans, they can be generic shoes. You pick whatever you like. My personal preference is painting on Vans slip-ons. The surface is just beautiful. It's perfect. It's not too hairy. And the reason I talk about hairy is because the first part of this tutorial, you're going to see me with a lighter. You will need a lighter. Kids, if you're doing this, ask your mom, your dad, your uncle, your aunt, whoever, someone who can handle a lighter and isn't going to burn the house down to take your lighter and run it right across the top of those shoes. Uh, next up, we're going to need paint. Now, some of the main colors that I'm going to be using in this are going to be pink, blue, white, and I use Liquitex Basics. One of the questions people ask me all the time, Dano, what kind of paint do you use? What do you use? Do you seal them? Do you do this? Paint, paint, paint. So this is it. I've answered it in another video before, but I'm sure I'll have to answer it for the rest of my life. I use Liquitex Basics. It dries hard. It dries rubbery. That means it's going to be flexible, it doesn't crack, it's also waterproof because it dries like hard plastic. But these are the primary colors I'm going to be using. And I chose cobalt blue hue, I use medium magenta, I call it pink in the video, but it is medium magenta. And also titanium white, I have a large bottle of titanium white. And you can find these in your local craft store like Michael's or Johann's or any of those places. Usually the small ones are about 4 to $5 each. The big ones run about 10, but you can usually find a coupon through their app or something like that. Now for some of the added details in this design, I got a couple other colors here. Uh, for the drawbridge and any of those windows, that yellowish color you can see right on there, I use a mixture of this cadmium red light hue, which I consider orange, and also a cadmium yellow deep hue, which is like a really thick, good yellow. Uh, and white. I use that titanium white with the three of those and kind of mix it up to get the color I want. And again, you can see the reference pictures to know what I'm talking about. For the Mickey head fireworks, I use just straight up gold. I like gold. It's got a good little glitter to it. Uh, now, these are two other colors I use in the tutorial, but you don't have to. I use dioxazine purple, which you can just use that magenta pink color and the blue, mix those together and get your own kind of purple if you don't feel like spending another five bucks for this, but I have it anyway, so I figured why not use it? And also light blue violet. Now this, to me, I use as a light blue just for accents, but again, you can add a little bit of white to that cobalt blue and it's gonna be the same kind of effect. This, I just had it so I didn't mix if I didn't need to. Now one of the most important materials you're gonna need for this is paint brushes. So the ones I've got here are really fancy ones by Royal and Lang Nickel. They have a cool little silicone grip. Honestly, I get this question a lot of, hey Dano, what kind of paint brushes do you use? And I don't have a specific kind, I've said it before. I just go to the store and I buy the thinnest, smallest ones I can find and I go with that. Uh, in this case, what I use a lot is this shader. It is a Royal Lang Nickel number two acrylic shader. Uh, also in this tutorial, I use this 20 slash zero round. So I use those a lot. There's another one that I've got here. I think it's called a spotter brush. Doesn't exactly tell me what it's called but it's super thin, super tiny. I'm winking because I can see the edge of it. Uh, but it, like the thinner and pointier it is, the better, the easier your life's gonna be, especially when it comes to those details. You're gonna need a cup with water so you don't leave your brushes all covered in paint. Also, remember to take your brushes out. I am notorious for forgetting to leave my brushes in there and it's not good. And also a surface, somewhere to paint. I've got a palette. You can use a big piece of paper. You can use something. Just try not to make a mess 
or mom and dad will yell at you. Uh, lastly, for the details, I use some fine detail pens. You can see I've got a couple brands here. This one's Faber-Castell, and they're tiny little like artist pens. There's super fine points, usually in the millimeter range. Um, this one ranges from 0.1 millimeters to 0.7. This is by Statler. Now, none of these people are sponsors. These are just ones I personally found work best for me, and I like to use them. So. In this tutorial specifically, I'm gonna be using a different set. These are by Micron, and these are little brown ones you can find again in any craft store. Uh, I use the 05 and the 03 in this tutorial, and I use them on those small details like these little, tiny little drawings of the windows and the little partner statue at the bottom, so that's where that comes in handy. Guys, you have to let me know down in the comments how this tutorial works out for you. I want you guys to tweet me pictures of your end result at Dano Flores or Instagram at Dano Flores, you can see it all there. But for now, let's just get right onto the tutorial. All right, guys, now this first part of the video, basically what you're seeing me do is where I talked about that lighter, you run it right across the edge, burn off all those tiny little hairs, makes painting easier. Uh, next, I'm mixing up the pink, but I'm gonna get into something here in just a second. You're gonna see these brightly fancy colored socks that I wave in front of the screen, there they are. And I'm showing you the inside of the shoe. That is because I like to stuff the inside of the shoe to make sure the surface is firm. If it's a droopy surface, it's gonna be a lot harder to paint and it's gonna be a lot easier to mess up your straight lines. So make sure the inside of the shoe is firm. What I'm working on here, and again, you can see in the corner, there's that little image up there and it's based kind of just a reference image. But those are reference images from an older, older design that I've done, so it doesn't exactly match up with this video when I painted this new one. But they'll both be available here for you just to take a look at. Now as you see, this brush that I'm using is actually my thicker brush. This is what's called a filler brush, and you can see it's a little bit flatter and it lets me push around the paint a little smoother, while my other brush that I was using is going to be that round brush. And it's usually used for a little bit more details, or if I need to make a straight line around a crease, I'll use it for that. Now the way I start a lot of these designs is by basically just laying down the shapes, the quick rectangles, the little triangles that stick out. Uh, you can see in that reference up there where I painted mostly pink, but I left a portion blank. I left that portion blank because I'm gonna be going over it in blue later, and I wanted a little reminder. Uh, another thing you might notice is I'm going over the same part multiple times. For some reason, these kind of shoes, it does require a couple coats of paint, so that's what takes the longest, I found, is going over the same thing two or three times, you know, letting it dry, giving it five minutes, going it over again, because that's really what lets it build up, become thick, and like really, really stand out. If you try to do just one layer, as you can see here on that little tower I'm painting, it comes out very light, and it doesn't look good, so you do have to go over it a few times. Now be very careful when you're painting on that little crease that goes over, because it is real easy to make these little turrets stick out longer than you want to, and then you have to go over something to bring them back in, and then you end up adding black paint, or you end up adding like a or you end up adding like a dark blue paint to kind of fit in, and before you know it, you're painting the whole shoe when you didn't even need to, and all this extra time is wasted. All right, let's just fill in these last couple shapes of the castle, and pretty soon here, I'll be moving into the blue color. Let's see here, just fill that in, a little bit more white and a magenta mix. Here we go, I'm adding another little turret off to the side. Now, as you notice in those reference pictures, it's a little bit different. I painted things a little bit differently back then. And even some of the stuff that I'm painting now, I'm really just laying down as a base coat. It's going to be gone over later with either blue or a slightly different color. So, it just kind of shows you that you definitely have to spend time and lay down that initial base coat. And here I've added actually a little bit more white to that magenta. And I'm adding just some slight highlights there to the middle of that larger rectangle in the center, just to kind of show it lit up because the design is based off Disneyland at night. It's supposed to go with the world of color on the other shoe, be kind of a balance. So that's why I went with the fireworks. I use a navy colored shoe for that reason. That way I don't have to paint a whole night sky. The shoe is already the right color. Now you see here, I'm moving into this uh, cobalt blue color. Now I paint it all along the bottom just as a base coat. That's actually not gonna end up looking like that. 
You see I've added white and they started adding that to the top of the castle to get that lighter blue color. That's what it's gonna end up on the bottom, but for now I just set it there. I could put a layer down just so it's drying while I'm working on other things. Uh, that's one thing you'll notice I'll be doing here throughout the rest of the tutorials. I bounce around between colors. And that is for the reason of letting it dry. If I paint one little thing real fast, I could let it dry, move on to something else before not only my paint dries in the uh, palette itself, but it just gives me time to let the paint dry on the shoe and I don't have to waste anything and I can just keep moving. Here we go, some more details added to the top. Now these are, again, just the basic blocks, the basic shapes that I'm gonna be painting on here. You can see in my tutorial picture on the top, they're all just one color of dark blue. And here I've already gone to the point of making them a little bit lighter just to save time. When I did the older one, it took me a lot longer to paint these and as I've gotten practice over the years, painting the same design over and over, I decided why not just mix the paint as I go, it makes things a little bit quicker for me, and there you have it. So here I am adding that lighter blue to that bottom coat now that it's dried up a little bit. And notice I'm leaving those little blanks there. Those are actually going to become pink later. And as you're painting them, one thing you might notice is when you're filling in the pink, it will take a couple of coats because there's definitely a difference between where that large pink rectangle is that we started out with and those little divots that I'm leaving empty. You'll be able to feel a difference if you don't put a couple coats on there. So just keep that in mind as you're painting that. I'm going to fill in one of these side turrets. Now, as I'm painting this blue, even though I painted the whole thing earlier, I'm gonna leave a little bit of like a cave shape. You can see it right there, because that's where the drawbridge is gonna go. You can see I mixed a little purple. This is, again, that dioxazine purple, or you can use the magenta and the blue together and come up with a purple of your own, but it's only used in a couple tiny little different parts. And you see at this point, I've already moved into the accents. Most of the stuff is laid down already. I'm putting down these little lighter magenta accents to really give it that Disneyland castle at night. I should say Sleeping Beauty Castle at night kind of look. So here we go, we add just a couple more little lighting effects here and there. And then I'm gonna get into the other one. If you notice I'm still using that same brush. If I really wanted to, I could paint the entire design with one brush, but I choose to use two just to make things a little bit easier when it comes to these tiny little dots I'm about to get into. Let's see here, paint one more little spire on top of that castle. And you see my white paint there on the palette. Uh, I'm going to be dipping into that for just a little bit and I'm going to start using a lot of white and a lot of blue to really put some speckles on top of that roof. Oh, so here we go, I'm going over the little pink dots a couple times to really smooth them out between each other because if you look close there's definitely a big gap in between them. So here we go, add a little bit of accents onto that, some pink squiggles along this roof and then I go over the pink squiggles just underneath them or on top of them with another layer of that purple I mixed up earlier really kind of just makes it stand out a bit. Uh, let's see, and there we go, bouncing back and forth. Here we go, mixing the uh, cadmium red, the cadmium yellow, with a little bit of white to come up with that orangey, kind of glowy Disneyland look. And well, the one thing, the original pair I did, if you guys take a look, um, it actually, now in the original pair I did, it didn't have the partner statue in the bottom. It actually had just like a drawbridge kind of thing, like you could see the carousel in the background. So it's just a couple like black squiggles underneath that thing. And later I decided to add the partner statue in there and you'll see later how I do it with the markers. But here we go, I've mixed up more of that white and blue and I'm adding more lighting to the front of the castle so I can really separate those front turrets from the sides nearby where the drawbridge are. And it kind of makes things look a little bit better. Here we go, keep adding a little more light blue. Now if you notice, I leave those little marks there, just as kind of a, a reference in the actual picture. And again, you can get all the references from dano.net. If you look at the reference picture, there are these little black lines on those side turrets that uh, you can go over later with marker. I just left them on there as a reminder for me. Sometimes I do them just in dark blue paint. Sometimes I do them in black marker. Every time I've done this design, it's been a little bit different. Some have been more detailed. Some have been way less detailed. It's kind of a matter of how much time you really want to spend doing it. Uh, here I've moved on to that tiny little white brush, the spotter or the round, uh, as some people call it. And you see, look at those tiny little dots I did, all those tiny little white dots. Now they're white mixed with a little bit of blue. And here again, I went back over them with just blue by itself, just to give it that variation and make it have that kind of tiled look. Now I'm into the gold, so I'm adding little tiny lines on top of every one of those little spires. And on some of them, you'll notice here, I'll start crossing them. 
just giving them like a little cross, a little thing that juts out side to side. There we go. Just to kind of give it a little bit more, a little bit more oomph when you look at this thing. And before you know it, I'm gonna be getting into the Mickey head. Uh, before I do, oh, see, look, here we go. I've laid out all of my markers. There we go, all the markers. And I'm gonna start adding little lines, little crosses along here. And you can see in that reference picture where exactly I'm putting these little crosses and these little lines just to kind of make it look more like the Disneyland castle. And this is all using the Micron pen, the O1 size. That's like O1 millimeter um, or one millimeter, what they're assuming. There we go. Add a couple more little dots here and there. It's a bunch of tiny dots, so you do have to have a very steady hand when doing this. Uh, now I think I'm moving into the thicker one. Yeah, this is the thicker lined one. This is the O5 or the O3. Either one of those will work. And I started to add a little bit thicker lines, some lines on the side of that drawbridge, lines on that side of that castle. There we go. And some of them, you know, you just kind of look at the reference picture, see where there's a line. You don't have to make it exact. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just make it yours. It'll be really cool that way, especially if it's a bit different from this one. So there we go. We've got the final picture. And here I'm back into that gold where I'm going to make three circles. There's one big circle, kind of make it light and spread it out. There's my three circles and the Mickey head. And then I jump back into that tiny little brush and I start making little lines for the fireworks. Now, if you notice when I'm making these lines for the fireworks, they have gravity to them. The ones that go up go straight up. The ones that go to the sides go to the side and drop down. And the ones that go down also just go straight down because they're fireworks. So I leave space in between each one so that I can make alternating lines in between and really give it that kind of firework effect. Well guys, this is just about the end of it. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial video. Make sure you tag me in pictures, you send me pictures of your creations. I really hope this helped you out. But I wanna know what should we paint next on the other shoe? Should I do World of Color like the original design? Is there something else that you guys would like to see? Let me know down in the comments below. We'll decide together what we're gonna paint next in the next video. And uh, be sure to share this video if you've had any success using any of these tips, you've learned anything, Share it with your friends, I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for subscribing. If you're new around here, and this is your first time to the Dano channel, please go check out some of my other videos. I've got a lot of painting videos, a lot of Disneyland related stuff. Hopefully you'll like it. I love you all, thank you guys. I will see you in the next video, goodbye. We did it, man. We totally did it. We made it. Like, this is what 6 a.m. in Disneyland looks like. Yeah. The next day. <laughs> it is crazy.